Hello, this is Survival Guyver, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Yunchi Inflatable Camping Lantern. 1000 lumens. It's an inflatable tube with an LED strip in it. So, it says fast sense inflation, foldable, magnetic, adjustable 10 levels, and portable. Uh, so, really, there's only three things that are in there that are accurate. This is one of those items that um, I'm very disappointed in. Um, so I got this as a deal with something else and I'm actually going to be returning it this weekend because it is garbage. So product specifications, 1000 lumens, which it's, uh, I got to tell you, it's nowhere near 1000 lumens. Um, if you're at like 300 lumens, I'd be impressed, but, uh, it's nowhere near a thousand. And I may understand why or why not, so I'm going to discuss that shortly. Weight's pretty accurate, 4.3 ounces for the tube itself. Not any of the wiring, not the battery pack that they give you for the uh, three AA batteries. The material is a thermoplastic and a PVC, that's probably pretty accurate. Dimensions are accurate, 33 uh, inches by 3.5 or 85 uh, I guess 85 centimeters by 9 centimeters. Not sure on that one. One year warranty. Mounting is hoop. Comes with this little um, uh, like reusable zip tie and magnets. And the magnets are like refrigerator magnets. They don't hold anything. Power supply. Uh, USB. Power bank. Car charger. Laptop. USB charger. Anything of that nature. It does come with an extension for USB cable. And this is a Hangzhou Yunchi Technology Company in China, which is fine. You know, fortunately, almost everything is made in China now. So adjustable 10 levels, sort of. I'm going to try to show you that in um, how this works. So the packing list is one inflatable camping light, one AA battery holder. It holds three AA battery, three AA batteries. Uh, it doesn't come with them, it just has a battery holder. A USB extension cable, two hook and look, loop strips, which is Velcro strips, and two ties. Yeah, yeah, that's negligible there. Here's how the box actually came, it came pretty messed up. Um, this comes with a, probably the only thing that's worth it in here, is this clear bag. Um, this is probably the only thing that's worth it, it's got some nice, um, Portage on it. It's nicely done. You can roll up this uh, hold of a lantern, stick it in here, and use it like a actual lantern with the plastic cover. So let me get everything out of here. So that's the bag. That's the bag it comes in, which is actually nice. Let me zoom out a little bit. This. Oop, not that far. There we go. So we got two uh, self-adhesive self backed Velcro pads. So we got two of them, not a name or end of anything, not like a 3M or Arco or anything like that nature. So you got two of them. You have these, they call them ties. They're decent length, pretty close to a foot. And they're Velcro. They stick to themselves. You know, it's uh, loops on one side, hooks on the other. So that's actually not bad. Um, not necessarily what I would use, but you know, I'm talking about different situations other than just camping. But camping, if you had to put this inside a tent, it may be difficult at best. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Those are fine. Those aren't. That's fine. This is the battery pack. So there's no hole, no screw that comes with it. It's just a USB and an on and off switch. So USB is usually five volts, 2.4 amps, something of that nature. Um, three AA batteries is 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5. So you're looking at three, four and a half volts. So if you run it off the AA batteries, you get about 10 hours of charge time or run time. Um, 
and less voltage than if you ran it off something that's 5 volts, like a, a phone charger or a laptop or a um, power bank. And I'll show you the power bank shortly for mine. So that's okay. It's good. Eh, not great. Okay. Let's see if I can rest this out here. This is the USB extension cable. So it's one side's male, one side's female. So you can stick that to the this end, like that. Remember, if you ever see the symbol on top for the USB, that's the top. On a C, it doesn't really matter, but on an A, it does. You can't do it that way. It has to be symbol side up. Okay, that's not a particularly great fit, but it works. And the cable seems to be fine otherwise. See, so you could even do it this way if you wanted to look infinite power. Uh, it doesn't work that way. But you could always hold it onto this, onto like a carabiner or something, to, so you don't lose the cable. Although that is really hard to remove. So that's okay. This is the actual light. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit here. So I got some room. Um, this is the actual inflatable light. So it's plastic vinyl bag that's uh what did it say 33 inches long and that's right but so the seal going to the inside is loose you can actually move it pretty well which means two things i mean if you're blowing this up with your mouth you're going to get um biological product inside uh, what I mean by that is you may get bacteria in there, you may get viruses in there, you may get... Well, you're going to introduce moisture to a thing that shouldn't have moisture. Um, so, if it was sealed, it would probably grow moss or, you know, slime on the inside. Because it's not sealed on the end, it should be fine because you'll have a little bit of a vent. Stuff will still grow on the inside. But it won't be as bad, I think, anyway. But, uh, I don't know if you can see it. There is somewhere down here. I found it the first time. I think it's right there. Um, there's a pinhole in this, so I try to inflate it, and I get about halfway, and then it doesn't hold anymore. So, <clears throat> that's my first pet peeve on that. The LEDs, looks like it's just a generic chip. So, you know, like... They're all cut and splice. You can cut them, cut them, cut them. So you have individual LEDs. A whole bunch of them. And there's your air valve right in front of the LED. Which I suppose is fine as long as the LED is properly potted and... I think it's hard to open. Um, filling this up, you have to pretty much squeeze a little bit to be able to get air into it. And it's really, really difficult. It doesn't blow up like most inflatables. And to release air out of it, you have to squeeze this to something about that. That kind of consistency in order to be able to get the air out. It's a real pain in the butt to get the air out. But the valve itself otherwise, as far as I could tell, that's not bad there. But, so you see these little round things here? Those are magnets. And they're not very strong magnets either. Um, let me see if I have something I can use. I'll use some Burt's Bees Rescue Ointment. So will stick to that barely. It's about the strength of a refrigerator magnet. So if you have anything of weight connected to it, it's going to fall right off. Unfortunately. It doesn't take much to make these magnets fall off. So it's not a neodymium magnet, it's not a rare earth magnet, it's, I can't even tell in this without opening it up. It doesn't look like a ceramic magnet, it just looks like a really, like somebody magnetized a steel disc, and it's got really no strength to it. So, there's that. And, the back side says this. 
Yunchi adjustable 10 levels 1000 lumen or 1000 lm which would assume means lumen maybe not a model number so if somebody said well it's not really a thousand lumens well that's true it's not it's about 200 pushing 300 if you get a decent battery pack behind it but on the box it says it's a thousand lumens so this light should be in theory as bright as this flashlight and it's nowhere near that and this now you need to realize I have a light on top of the camera here and another one off to the left which is illuminating everything and I can still see that light quite brightly so I'm gonna pause this for a second and I am gonna grab the battery bank and we'll see how that goes okay so here's an old one I have a RAV power this is actually going to be featured in another video in a couple of days here. Uh, capacity is 26,800 milliamps, 99.16 watt hours. 5 volts at 2.1 max. 2.1 amp max. Okay? So that 5 volts is more than this, which is 4.5 volts. So, yeah. So it should, in theory, be brighter with a battery pack. So, let me go plug this in, and just so you can see, this is the little controller that's in here. There we go. Um, it's not, um, you can't just hold it to make it go higher in, in um, brightness or lower. You could actually click it. And then this cycle switch is to make it flash and strobe like a 1990s um, techno club kind of thing um, so yeah let's take a look okay batteries on let's see what we have when we turn this on so camera has a little hard time focusing it let me flip it over in theory, I'm saying just in theory, this should be very, very bright. Now, as I said, this isn't a plastic, uh, like a diffused cover, so maybe it doesn't show exactly a thousand lumens, but really it's nowhere near it. So, let me see if this is all the way up. I'm going to hit the up button. Yep, that's as bright as it goes. If I hit the down button... I don't know if you can, so that's the lowest it goes. Now, I don't know if you can hear the noise when I click on the buttons, but it makes a high-pitched, really high sine wave kind of noise. Um, usually, that noise is typical of um, unfiltered electronic devices, uh, like cheap light bulbs and LED strips. Some that you find, like AutoZone, for instance, um, will have that noise. It doesn't really get much brighter on the highest point. I'm going to lower it to about there. And the reason for that is because the strobe... Can you hear that sound? It's really bad. I don't know which side it's coming from. Might be the controller. I don't know if you can hear that noise or not, but it's, it's really high-pitched. It hurts my ears. But I have sensitive hearing. So now you can have it strobe back and forth like this and it makes a woo, woo, woo noise. So if you're really sensitive to this kind of noise, if you're uh, maybe adult ADHD or neurodivergent, this might be a problem. Um, so that's the first one. Then you have this, which is also really, really annoying. And it goes back to solid. And it goes back to this again. So, I think we're going all the way down. See, it actually flashes slower when it's in the lower setting than it is on the higher setting. So, however it, it uses its power is kind of iffy. So, let me turn that off. Oh, actually, let me turn it back on for a moment. Let me turn this all the way in bright. 
as bright as it goes, we shouldn't be able to see a difference. Yeah. Um, I know the flashlight is focused, but it's even blinding out the LEDs that are on the tube itself without air being in there. So, I don't know. Uh, when I tested it in a dark room, like a closet, um, I couldn't even read by it. It was so dim. And that's with a strong power bank and more voltage than what it comes with. So this is going back this weekend. I'm sending this back to Amazon. So, again, this is the Yunchi Inflatable Camping Lantern. There's a version of this made by Climate with a K. I'm probably going to pick that one up. That is a major name brand that is rated well. And um, this one's also rated well. And it was about $15 cheaper. And um, not counting the hole that's somewhere down here where it's not, where it's not holding air. I could fix that if I wanted to. But it's nowhere near a thousand lumens. I intend to use this as a light in the back of the trunk. If I have a emergency or anything in the back of my vehicle, I can just turn this on. I don't have to worry about anything hitting it or hurting it because it's it's in a an inflated tube. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And that high pitched noise would drive me absolutely insane. And unless I get a multimeter out and test it. Um, I'm thinking that there is some kind of voltage leakage between the LEDs or the controller. So, yeah, not sure on that one. So this is going back. This is not recommended. Disappointed, not recommended. There are some people that have had better, uh, better reviews on this, but almost everybody complains that it makes noise. And even though it's supposed to be totally quiet, uh, it makes noise. Um... And it's not as bright as it says it is. Like if you look at that picture on the front, compared to that in the background, uh, yeah, I don't see it. It's nowhere near that bright. And of course the magnets, which I was hoping to use, are not strong. They're actually pretty bad. Actually, if we flip it over this way, let's see. Actually see. Okay. Actually, see between all the. Look at that, you can actually see between the uh, LED strips how they're wired in. So that's interesting. I would have had something in the back to protect that just in case. But that's just me. So uh, sorry for the bad news on this one. Um, I was hoping it would be awesome, and unfortunately, it is not. Um, it has potential. It needs some better quality control and legitimate uh, specifications or make it cheaper so somebody could fix it as needed. But um, that's it. I'm sorry this is one of those disappointing videos, but I think you need to know. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comment section. I will answer them. Um, you can also email me at survivor.giver at gmail.com. Uh, I know my YouTube name has a dash in it, but I couldn't do that on Gmail. And I couldn't do the dot on YouTube. So it's, that's not great. But it is what it is. So that's it. And I hope you're okay with the new lighting. Uh, so I have a new LED lamp up front here on top of the camera. So if I turn this one off, um, it's less glare and less shadow. So that might make it a little bit easier for people to see. So thank you for watching and um, have a better evening. Bye-bye.